These passages from the Gospel of Matthew are, in a manner of speaking anyway, about looking for certainty in all the right places and finding doubt. The whole chapter is in large measure about that. Is this Jesus, after all, the Messiah we've been waiting for? Or will the wait go on after this fiery young rabbi with the compelling ideas fades from the scene just like the past ones all did, and his followers, too, like so many others before, are just absorbed back into whatever they were doing before. This is a chapter which raises those very questions. This chapter out of Jesus' story begins with doubt, with the doubt of John the Baptist, no less. The chapter begins with doubt. Where does it end? While the chapter begins with the doubt of the venerable baptizer, its energy moves forward to an antidote of sorts, to hidden things mysteriously possessed only by infants, something greater than doubt, something greater even than belief. What goes beyond doubt is apparently a whole new way of being which brings relief, rest, a complete rest from the weariness of a day-to-day trudge through a life without meaning. So this snapshot of Jesus' life and ministry follows a progression which begins with the doubts of the last and the greatest of Israel's prophets, the very one who proclaimed, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, who in the midst of thundering demands for changes of heart and life, proclaimed, One who is mightier than I is coming. The progression continues with the all but blind groping of a wise and intelligent elite after hidden things and ends by offering its promise of rest to those who are weary and carrying heavy burdens. This 11th chapter in Matthew's Gospel runs quite a gamut. There is a plaintive, doubtful cry from an imprisoned John the Baptist. Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? We move to whiny children fussing back and forth, saying, we want to play weddings. No, no, we want to play funerals. There are unrepentant cities which, though part of the promised land, will nevertheless fare worse on Judgment Day than Sodom and Gomorrah. And finally, in our passage for today, we come to the wise and intelligent. The wise, the intelligent, that's a relief. They will figure these things out for us, won't they? They'll draft it all out and hand it to us. The company handout, the path, the way, the meaning behind all these cryptic teachings and bold miracles from this Messiah who ain't behaving the way Messiahs are supposed to behave, so we're told. They'll give us a map. They'll give us commentaries. They'll give us Bible dictionaries, theological takedowns, hermeneutical unravelings. They will lead us to... No, wait. It all seems to lead to infants. It's all been revealed, not to the chief prophet not to children, not to the leaders and teachers and denizens of the great cities, but to infants, little ones who can't yet even talk. And then after all that, we're offered some kind of promised land of rest. For you who are weary, rest. Okay, but we who are not infants, where will we find it? How will we access it? Things hidden, what hidden things? Hidden from whom? What are people, seeking people, searching, questing people, men and women on a mission, us people? What are we not seeing? What are we not recognizing? Entire cities, Chorazin, Bethsaida, deeds of power were done among them, but they didn't see either. They didn't recognize the deeds of power. They had no idea what was happening and who was among them making it happen. 
clueless kids shrieking past each other in the marketplace, while equally clueless adults pass their glazed eyes over John fasting and praying and just see one more religious fanatic. And now comes Jesus dancing among the partygoers, and they sniff, huh, a drunk and a glutton, and they get on with what's important. Things revealed, what things? These things. Revealed to whom? Revealed to us. Only we're not seeing these things. Our gaze is clouded over with expectations about what religion is, what religion supposedly should be. Passionate and acted out interpretation of Scripture revealed down through the ages is dismissed as organized religion. Outreach to suffering neighbors is dismissed as coddling social inferiors who just need a kick in the pants. Our expectations, the world's expectations, have foundered upon what we want. We want to play weddings, we want to play funerals, we want to play the games we want to play before we trudge back to the jobs we hate but which pay the bills. What do our friends, our neighbors, our brothers, our sisters want? What of those with nothing living under bridges? Who cares? What is being made plain even to John that he's not seeing? The blind see, the lame walk, the poor get some good news for a change. Just what is it that you were wanting, O oh, you outcast in the camel's hair cloak, munching on bugs and wild honey? And we who are weary, what makes us weary? What wears us out? Where can we find hope? Where can we hope to find rest? Is there something we're not seeing because we're so weary? What is it that makes us so weary we can't see the one thing we really need to see? God has hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. What are these things? What has God hidden? Yes, this is the end of a long answer to are you the one who is to come or are we to wait for another? The answer to that question seems to be hidden. It is a response to John the Baptist's doubt and to ours. Why hide these things from the wise and learned? Isn't it the usual way of affairs for the wise and the learned to know things that are simply beyond the grasp of little children? Isn't it the other way around? Little kids can't grasp things that the learned adults can. There is a reversal going on here, typical of Jesus, typical of the Bible. Younger brothers are picked instead of the eldest. Infertile women give birth. The greatest shall be humbled, the humble exalted. Whoever would be greatest must be slave of all. The hungry are filled, the rich sent empty away. The first shall be last, and the last first, itinerant, unlettered, unlearned fishermen are picked to be apostles. Where are such reversals crying out to be made now? Where are the lowly longing to being lifted up? Those poor, both rich and poor, who are in dire need, not just for material wealth, but of genuine good news. May we strive to be like the infants to whom these things are made plain. What is knowable to little ones but not to the wise and learned? Is there hope for the wise and learned? Presumably, but they have to be willing to be taught by children. It says things have been hidden from the wise and learned and revealed to children. It doesn't say that the learned can't know these things. No, we're being told that these things are not just not readily accessible to the learned, to those so steeped in the world's games that they just can't see a salvation at which the world scoffs. How do we make the transition? 
Acknowledge your weariness. Don't try to talk yourself out of it. Weariness that is necessary for survival is still weariness. And we don't survive by bread alone. That which feeds our bodies and keeps them sleek and pretty can absolutely miss our souls. Stop overanalyzing. We hunger and thirst for something that can't be accessed by our worldly wise, world weary strategizing. Learn to live with and within doubt. What we need is hidden to those who are good with words and accessible only to those who trust as infants trust. Trust like little children trust, like infants trust. An infant, okay, a well-loved, well-cared-for infant does not worry in the strict sense of the word An infant just knows, no analysis, no rationalization, just knows that what he or she needs is there, will be there, rest, food, enough food to satisfy hunger, warmth, nurture. It's all just there. Again, I'm talking about a well-loved, well-cared-for infant an infant as well-loved and well-cared for as we are by God. Trust me, Jesus says, our Father will provide in that way. We can't always see it right in front of us. The way seems long and wearying and torturous sometimes, sometimes even non-existent, but it's there. Trust, receive. May we open ourselves Receive it like well-loved, well-cared-for infants who just know. May we be like a certain child and not like the children playing in the marketplace. Be like the child Jesus mentions in another place, Matthew 18, 2 through 5, if you want to fact-check me. The child who is the only one who can receive heaven's rest. Be like that child not like the children. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. This chapter of doubt takes us straight as an arrow to this. Amen.